Perfect. I see we got Ryan on. How are you today, Ryan? Good. Thanks. Yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, so, Ryan, do you want to, so I know you we were hopped on here. Um, I'm not sure if you got my link to book a training as well. Um, but you've been running some lead gen with us for some time now, and you're more or so wanting to learn kind of like where do you start in your system to who you should be focusing on to to find the opportunity is that correct or is there a little that, bit more that's to correct, it yes okay <clears throat> perfect and i think that's something that you know um a lot of individuals do encounter when they do have a larger database is sometimes just figuring out where do i even start um and it really comes down to um as well you know there's, there's all different factors, of course. Uh, there's people that have been completely organized, everything's routine. Uh, there's some people that may, you know, get busy, they fall in, they fall out, you know, they jump back in, they jump out, and then they're looking at a database they need to catch up on as well. So, um, Beverly, any insight on that? I know we, we talk about, we use our filters in the system, and of course, that's something we'll go over, Ryan, as well. Um, but where do you typically start, Beverly? And when you jump into a system, let's say, and I'm not saying this is your case, but maybe it's been ne neglected um, or just, you know, you're looking for opportunity. Where do you typically start or focus your, your efforts? And this is my favorite part of training. Absolute favorite. Because it is, it's that deer in the headlights, right? It's like you have all these great intentions. You're like, I'm going to jump in my database and I'm going to call these leads. And then you open it up and go, oh, but where do I start? And then it's like, that fire that was raging, flaming, just, it just rained on it and it just completely went out. And now, now it's left with smoldering yeah. smoke, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have to always be mindful of is the quality of the lead and what is the goal of the day. So basically we have, I'm going to say three different types of leads that now let's forget about the source. We're just going to be talking about quality. We have three different quality of leads that are in our dashboard. We have the people that we have never spoke to. We have this, we have the people that we have spoke to, but they have a situation that we really are going to be challenged at converting them based on whatever their situation is, because they're not even sure where they are in the process. The third lead that we have are the ones that we've had really good conversations with that we should be nurturing. So those are really the components, the overview of the leads that are in our dashboard. Now, it, it doesn't matter where the sources came from. They can be Spear that got dropped in, that were imported. They could be Google. They could be Facebook. It doesn't matter where the leads came from. It's what is the quality? You could have a thousand leads that you gathered from a um, completely off target place. So these leads are not even valuable because they may have not even been looking at real estate. They may have been looking at the grocery store, lo looking at buying vegetables. And I'm just going like on a limb here, but just trying to really emphasize quality leads, or you could have a hundred people that were absolutely in the process of looking for a home. I would rather have a hundred people that are in the process of looking for a home than having a thousand people that mean nothing to me. Right. Yeah. And we have to think about our database that way. So when we're thinking about it in those three components, where's the gold? Well, the gold is in the people that we've had conversations with that we've lost. And the gold is really in the people that are active. Because if they're actively engaged, opening emails, looking at searches, they know your name. Because the email that's coming to them is addressed to them and it has your branding within that email. So they know you. So if you look at the three components, leads you never spoke to, there's great opportunity in those leads. What's the goal? Leads that you've spoken to that have situations, have they been organized with tags to be able to identify quickly what their situations are? And the leads that we've spoke to, are they organized properly with reminders? Now, how, how do we define the difference between the leads that are situational, that are in that contacted phase, right? 
I'm going to jump in your database and we're going to do some playing around. So I don't, I, I always wait because I don't know if you have like the authentication on. Yes, you should have just received a text with a four digit number. Sorry, one second here. I'm going to have to, I forgot, I got to go into the system and. Uh, <clears throat> I just didn't want to have to go in it because I copy and paste and I get it already. I don't want to have to enter in the email address and the password again. Yeah, yeah. no worries. I uh, I have to turn his blur feature on. I don't think I have it on. Oh. It's buying his time. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, so it's 6520. And hopefully, am I going to have to log out and log back in, or am I just going to be able to refresh, Crystal? You should be able to see it. It's in I there. I see not it, see so. it. No? No. If you go up to his user preferences and then um, into his CRM settings, there's the blur field option there. So maybe toggle it on or save that and then it should. Uh, in the CRM, which, which button? What, what am I so hovering? When you go to the preferences, right? Where the up in the top right hand corner under user profile, user preferences. Oh, okay. And then under the CRM settings, there's the blur data. It says yes. Okay. Maybe just save it and then maybe a little prompt your computer to show it. Let me. So crazy. All right, let me just do a refresh. No. Yeah, it says it's on there, but it is not. There's no like save option. It's just on or off. Oh, at the very bottom, it should be. There's a little save button. Oh, save. Okay. It says that it's saved. No, I think I'm going to have to log out and log back in. It's not there. Oh. So let me That's go out. <clears throat> it's just going to take a second because I got to go find his email and <laughs> go find <laughs> yeah, that, that authentication, I can't ever get in early just to get an idea of what's going on. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it, all right. It allowed me back in, but the blur feed, it, it just came back on whenever I oh. went out. Um, it's still not there. That's weird. Oh, is there wait, a problem because I'm logged into it? Should I log it in? Is, no, it is actually there. It's just in a weird spot. Okay. Um, blur, but yeah, it wasn't there before. All right. Blur. There we go. Okay. Now I can share my screen. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there with all of us. All right. Mm -hmm. Share screen. Okay. We should be looking at the dashboard now. All right. I'm gonna move all my windows here. So you have 1,921 leads. So what's the problem, Ryan? I don't understand the problem here. <laughs> <laughs> When you open your dashboard, like, like, tell me what you feel or what you think when you. Well, I used to call everybody right away. Mm -hmm. And then I would say 90 to 95% of them are fake numbers or anything like that. About 3% are from Toronto. Or wait, wait, how, many, how much of a percentage foreign. are bad phone numbers? I would say 95. Huh. Like so if a, I call number. If I call 10 leads, only one's going to be a phone, a bad phone number or only one's going to be a good phone number. I believe so. Yeah. That's the way it used to be. Huh? Okay. I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to prove that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's hurdle number one. You're like challenge, okay. challenge accepted. Yeah. Challenge accepted. So t tell me a little bit more. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stop you, but that just you know what? Up. It's just uh, very, very few people I get a hold of. And most of the 
I mean, a lot of them I do. Oh, we're not really looking right now or anything like that. And a lot of the people are out of market. Okay. And when you say out of market, what do you mean? They're, they're not buying or they're just not in your market looking? They're in Toronto or Vancouver, just sort of checking things out. They're not really looking to, to purchase anything in Calgary anytime soon or anything like that. They're just checking things out. Okay. So can I be honest? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> what we focus on expands. Do you believe that? Yep. Okay. So if our focus is 95% of my leads have bad phone numbers and the majority of my leads aren't in my market, can you see why it's not working for you? Yeah, I, I tried really hard for a while and then I just lost interest because I felt like I was wasting my time. Yes. Um, and it's funny, you know, we, we opened up um, this whole webinar. Um, I've, I've started teaching yoga since uh, November and the studio that I started teaching at, she was closed and only had two classes a week. That's it. She had no subscribers as far as like monthly members and she was paying the rent out of her pocket. And I showed up, I, I personally put eight classes a week on the agenda. So going from two to eight more, now we're at 10. Do you know how many classes the first month, uh, or do you know how many people showed up at the classes the first month? Very few. Very few, if any. And like I told Crystal, I had a decision, right? I could cancel the class before I got there because it showed zero as people that signed up. I could go and just leave early and go, woohoo, nobody showed up, I have a day off. Or I could do the flow myself and get my own practice in, or I could do the flow and record it. So I had a multiple way of looking at my situation. And I very easily could have said, oh, it's been a month, ain't nobody freaking showing up. This is so ridiculous. I'm just giving up like this ain't working. To now, Saturday, I had nine. Now we can fit comfortably 10 people. It's a small studio. I had nine people in my class. We had every day, we have someone signing up for a new membership. We have two people dropping in at 15 bucks. The consistency and the believing that showing up is what gets the results is where it's at. But if we just give up, we're never going to get to, because I promise you out of 1900 leads, I promise you this 40 to 45% are going to be bad phone numbers without a doubt. I promise you that I have been in dashboards for the last too many years. And I've been in too many dashboards across the board. It's on the upswing of 60% are bad phone numbers, but how do we make lemonade? We don't want to call the leads anyway, and nobody's answering the phone. So taking advantage of a bad phone number campaign and letting the system work itself. There are a lot of people that do typo. So bad phone number campaign is an absolute 100% must. And that will take care of just about half of your dashboard. But where the problem lies is if we're not identifying that it is a confirmed bad phone number, we're not really working the database to its full capacity. And we could be calling a lot of people and wasting time on the on the dialer on not organizing them out. So it is really imperative to get that first dial in to really determine if it is a bad phone number. So my first dial, I do like to call through and let it go to a voicemail and see if there's a name on it. If it's a different name, I make a note. If it rings and rings and rings and rings, more than likely the dialer is not detecting it as a bad phone number. So then that's where you're going to want to prompt to make a manual dial to double check. If it's a weird, like, if it's a weird, just click and hang up, I give that three shots and then I move it to a bad phone number and then I activate the campaign. So I can make a guarantee um, unless you imported a bunch of bad phone numbers in here, I can make a guarantee that 95% are not bad phone numbers. Um, but up to 60% can absolutely be. And that, so out of 10 leads, you have four versus one or a half. Because out of 10, if it's 95%, you'd have like a half a lead, right? <clears throat> so you really have to call like 11 or 12 to get to that one person has a good phone number. 
So really organizing the bad phone numbers, getting them on, on a bad phone number campaign is absolutely imperative. Unfortunately, that does require like calling to find out or putting the bad phone, phone number campaign on everybody and seeing who responds back. Because the bad phone number campaign is literally like, hey, I tried calling you at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is this is this the best number to reach you at? And honestly, people do respond back and go, oh, that seven should be a six. Or, oh, that six should be a seven. Like they typo their phone numbers. Yes. And the, the beauty in that is if they are giving you a bad phone number and you're able to convert that phone number into a good one, because the mind of a real estate agent is, well, we just think all of our bad phone number leads are a waste of time, where we have zero competition because there ain't no other agent in your market working their bad phone number leads. And if the leads are genuinely giving you bad phone numbers because they don't want to be touched, and you have the consistency and you have the right drip campaign because they're you're the only one that they remember because you're literally giving cucumbers to the vegan, they're going to remember you and you have no competition. So you literally have a better chance of converting bad phone number people. So if you look at it that way, it really changes the game. Yes. All right. So. When I jump into a dashboard, when I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to work it, the best way that I like to break down this 1921, and this is like my GPS analogy, you can take a 680 mile trip. And if it's literally you jump on the highway and go 681 miles, it takes forever to tick off 680 miles. But if your exits are 15 miles here and 10 miles here and 30 miles here and 50 miles here, it tends to go a lot quicker because our brain works better in smaller segments. So the goal out of 1921 leads is breaking them down into priorities. Well, first we got to find out where are they? So I'm just going to jump into a filter and I just want to look at the pipeline. And this is how I always look at the pipeline and just get a feel for where are they? Oh, I always do that, 50-50 shot, I get it wrong. <laughs> so I wanna know how many have we not spoke to at all? So that's gonna be your not set new lead and try to contact that we've just, we know that we've never spoke to. So yes. let's just see, let's just see how many are in there out of 1,921. Wow. 1,700. Yeah, I don't think the calls are actually being logged. So although uh, Ryan may be calling his leads, he's not logging it. And that's where this becomes an important factor for everyone, really. Is, do you have a drip campaign on at all, Ryan? Are they Anybody getting- that set it up previously, the, 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 the drip that got set up with them originally. Okay. And this then is, the, the people I call, I just, once I get the text message, I'll call them directly from, from the text message from you guys. And I'll call them directly through that way. Okay. So now this is prompting me to go, okay, what is happening here? So I'm going to take out the try to contact. And then I just want to see what's in not set a new lead. 1,031. Okay. Do you know what the difference is in your database between not set new lead and tried to contact? No. So you weren't really utilizing the pipeline stages that are here to move your leads after an attempted contact or anything, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So is it safe to say that 1700 leads have not ever been spoken to out of your 1900? And it's okay if it is. Yeah, it's well, yeah, it, yeah, it's probably 1700, but uh, okay. a lot of them have been called, but yeah. But not spoken to. But not spoken to, yes. Okay. So now I'm going to clear this out. And now I just want to see how many are in make contact. Because if they're in make contact, you've spoken to them. Did you use any other filters in the cold, warm, not ready, set meeting? Have you used no, any? No, I didn't really use the CM, CRM to its potential. Okay. So let's just see what's in make contact. 142. 
All right. So you have had contact, some form of contact with 142 people. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So now we're seeing, right, leads that we've never spoke to, leads that we have spoken to. So now the question remains in these 142, 142 leads is not a lot of leads to really kind of look at one by one. But what we have to remember why the tags are so vitally important is I don't want to have to open up the notes, read the notes of 142 people to determine what their situation was. And that's why the tags can tell the story without opening. Now, the AI tags, what, what exactly are those? Those are the, the bot. So when they, the bot replies, uh -huh. so these are all leads. So his make content just, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of point out is because he doesn't have any calls logged on all these people, I'm going to say it's safe to assume that all these made contacts um, are strictly people that have replied back to a text message. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. And so the bot is the, those AI bot, those tags are the ones where they replied and the bot is engaging with them. That's what those tags are. Okay, so delivered. It looks like there is no problem. I'm looking forward to reconnecting. So are these, when it says delivered, Crystal, because if I open it, it's probably going to be blurred. Um, are these responses that the lead came back with? Uh, some of them are. So hold on, I'll open up on my end. Are you here. just looking? So uh, curiosity, so that's, that's the bot. Okay, and then she, the lead replied next year. Next year. And then no problem, look forward to reconnecting with you. All right, it's next year, baby. That was October 23rd, 23. It's next year. All right, Sabrina, bring it. <laughs> it was active four hours ago, right? So. so that is a quality lead right there. Hello, we got to find out where she is in the process. Does this name ring a bell at all, Ryan? Or was I it just texting communication? If it went back and forward and they had any interest on with the bot, I would have definitely called. Okay. So you just didn't log them. So we don't know, right? Yeah. Okay. I did put a lot of notes in my phone saying call back in three months or say call so-and-so and, -so and there, there's the number. Okay. Hello. Sabrina. Yes. Hi, this is Beverly. I am following up for Ryan. You've been online. You were looking at some homes. It looks like some townhomes in the Calgary area. And you were texting back and forth. I know you were looking, you said last year for this year, and just kind of getting a feel for what your plans are this year for making a move. Um, yeah, we didn't actually finalize yet. So actually, my husband is on like home okay so, you know we are thinking about that yeah okay and what is your current situation sabrina do you guys own a house now or are you renting no, no we're renting yeah you're renting and are you in a lease term sabrina or are you month to month sorry are you in a lease term does your lease like come up to a new term on a particular time or are you just paying month to month right now so oh, not month to month, but actually, uh, like we can, we like we can move anytime because we are in downtown, so it is like so. Okay, so <laughs> your landlord will allow you out of the yeah, lease. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's and, easy. Yeah. And and kind of, what's your deciding factor? What what has to happen for you to be able to want to make this move? So actually, uh, um, I, I am I am waiting for my husband. Actually, she, he is on Bangladesh, like on my home country. Okay. For some issue, so so we will decide. Like when we, he will come back, so we will decide about that. So and that's, yeah. and, and how, how yeah, about that's the perfect. price? What yeah. Is, is it increasing or? <laughs> yeah. So when when is your husband going to be back? What what's the plan there? Um, uh, most probably this month. Okay. Yeah, last, how long has he been gone, Sabrina? Mm -hmm. How long has he been gone? Oh, then for one month. Okay, that's not too, too bad. Mm. Well, why, yeah. don't we, why, why don't I have Ryan just catch up with you maybe in a month or so, and you guys can just talk mm -hmm. about prices and just 
he just kind of needs to get a feel for what your expectations are and see if there's anything out there, if this would be the time or not. Does that sound like a plan? Mm, maybe uh, like, um, can you send me an email or I can, yeah, maybe last week of this month, yeah. Okay. Because I can say something. Perfect. Yep. And I'll have what him. What about the price there? Like house prices, what do you think? Okay. Well, it, you know, it, it's all relative, right? It's, it's what is going to meet your expectations to your affordability. And that's the conversation that you all really have to have, right? It's like, okay, this is what I'm comfortable paying a month. And what sales price is going to get me that number? And are there homes out there that would meet that expectation? And that's that. That's what you really need to discover right now. Because mm -hmm. everyone's yeah. value is different, right? So yeah, yeah. we just have to be able to see, you know, is there an opportunity out yeah, what there? What is the prediction that it can go up or what do you think? You know, it, it's it's hard to say because interest rates, you know, it's as mm -hmm. interest rates climb, prices come down. As interest rates come mm -hmm. down, prices go up. So it's really going to depend yeah. upon what's going on with the interest rates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So I will have him shoot you an email and just say, Hey, I know you spoke with Beverly just to, just to know uh -huh. which website yeah, we're yeah, from. Yeah. And then I'll have him give you a call at the end of the month. Okay. Okay. Thank Sabrina, you. have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all right. Now all of your other leads are shit because you had that one 5% of your leads. <laughs> yeah. All right. How do you, how do you feel about that? <laughs> what just happened? Um, well, I, I think it's good that you, yeah, the, like, see, you went through a bunch of different filters to find somebody that would be good to talk to. And that's somebody that's good to talk to. Um, but you, you went through the different contact. filters. And stuff. The, these are just people that you've supposedly spoke to or text messaged. Yeah. So these are your 142. And yeah, it just, it just popped to the top. Um. Yeah. What I was more looking for from you was, oh, there are people in my database that are looking in my area. And, oh, there are people that are looking to make a move. Now, I don't know jack squat about your market. And she's asking me my prediction of prices. Um, Hello, don't have an answer. So yeah. I, you can tell I just kind of made the best of being very general and taking it back to her. It's all about her. Like, I... It, it, it doesn't matter what the price, what's going on with the prices. What matters is, is there going to be something in the market that meets your expectations? Because at the end of the day, if, if she's in a $335,000 price point and there ain't squat out there for less than 500, she ain't going to be moving. Yeah. But that's okay. But that's okay. Right. We have had a conversation with her, wait for her husband to get back. It doesn't sound like she's talking to anybody. And this is where the beautiful place begins because every single one of us as agents fail in the follow-up, fail in the nurture because we tend to task so much and we lose sight of the priority. So this is building the pipeline and creating relationships. And if we can truly fall in love with that part of the process, the more relationships that we are building and the more that we're focusing on building that pipeline, we don't know who she knows. We don't know who her husband knows. When we are upfront and honest with them. Now, what I didn't ask her because I didn't feel it was time yet. However, when you talk to her at the end of the month, I would want to know how much are you paying for rent a month? And are you comfortable with that number or do you have some flexibility? And that itself is going to tell its story because if she's like, well, I'm paying 2000 a month, but they're looking at a $500,000 home and they have little to put down, they're going to be way over budget and it's not going to work. Yes. Right. And it's being honest with them. So, you know, give me an idea of what, of what you're comfortable spending. And my job is to see if there's an opportunity. Now tell me about your expectations and, we have a marriage we do if we don't stay renting yeah but hey if you know of anybody that would be in the market could you please pass along my name and 
good news travels further. I got more referrals from the people that I turned away and I was honest with than I did the actual people that I converted because they can't believe that you're honest because a lot of agents will run them ragged outside of the area that they're looking, trying to find that opportunity and trying to steer them. And I don't like to use that word, but that's inevitably what we're doing is we're trying to get them to fall in love with the house. that's not in their neighborhood of where they want to look to try to make the sale yes. or they show them homes outside their budget and then they get frustrated. So when we're honest with them, that's, that, that's the most valuable thing. All right. So we're going to say, talk to lead, make sure you send her an email and just, just send her an email. Say, Hey, Bev said that you guys had a great conversation. You're waiting for your husband to get back. I'll be checking back with you at the end of the month. Is there any questions that you have in the meantime, certainly reply to my email and, and let me know what questions you have. And I know you were asking her about the market. Give her your opinion. Yes. Okay. So you know, unfortunately, I think I already queued it, didn't I? Yes, I did. I saved it with, I, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to save this because for me to leave the note in that box, I got to move all my little windows around here. Bear with me. I need a bigger screen. Why isn't this window? I can't move my, there it goes. Right, I'm going to close that. And I am going to go into... There we go. Oh my gosh, everything's all in the way. All right, so this is a call result. I'm just gonna leave that as a call note. Now you have the call recorded, yay. So now we have select a result. That was a it call. says you're logging it as a call versus a note. I'll talk to lead. There we go, okay. All right. So this is where I like to get really specific with my tasks. Husband coming back from his country. Check in with their future plans. And then setting your date for the end of the month. Today's Wednesday. So I like to call people back the same time I caught them. So today's Wednesday. I would call her at 1. 11. Oh, you're 11? Yeah, Mountain Time. It's going to default to your time zone, though, Beverly. Is it? Usually, yeah. So if you want it at 1 or 11, sorry, then you're going to want to make it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> if there's time it is there. We'll see what it does. Yeah. one o'clock. Yeah. He knows where it is. All right. <laughs> so let's get back. I love that that phone call worked out. One and done. So will I get a reminder for that, or will I? Will I have to? In, look into it? He and I, I like to work the calendar like a bad habit, right? It's okay yeah. when you log into your dashboard. You need to make it a habit to pop over here to that calendar go to the calendar. And that's why I like to be very specific with what I'm putting on the calendar. So if we go to right there. Yeah. So if we log into our dashboard, go to the calendar, look at what's happening this week. And I like to be specific right here to know exactly what I need to be doing before I even go to that lead. Like husband coming back. Oh yeah. The husband was out of the country, right? Like this tells the story, just your few key words of exactly why you're following up so that you don't overthink it. Yes. Cause I'm a big overthinker. I'm like, why did I set this? Like what? Like if it's just a reminder, 1230 and I'm just like, what is going on? Right. So yeah. Log into your log into your agent locator, come over here to your task notification and everything that you set will be in there. And then you can just look and you can integrate if you if you use Google, you can integrate your Gmail calendar, right, Crystal? Yes. Yep. Yep. You do. And I set it up for you um, so that you get an email in the morning. So anytime you have any tasks due for that day or overdue, you'll get an email in the morning. Um, as well but yes you make the habit of checking the calendar it's a good habit you're going to get into to see what you have coming up that day 
or even okay. for the, the upcoming days as well, right? Mentally prepare yourself. So I heard you say, I went through a lot of filters to find her. Yes. I really didn't. I was talking more than I was searching. So basically when you look at your pipeline stages, we have not set new lead, tried to contact in, 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 in my brain, how my brain works. All three of these are the same, never spoke to them. So we looked at that group and there was 1700 leads in there. Yes. And then I went to your leads that were made contact two different groups. That's all I did. So when we think about our leads now, you see how our 1700 that we never spoke to very quickly when we went to make contact, it broke that 1900 total leads into 142 leads. Yes. 142 leads are very workable if you stay consistent with it. Yes. If you do 10 leads a day, that's going to take you approximately 14 days, if my math is correct. Yes. Yeah. So in 14 days, you will have touched and read the notes, tried to call every single person in your dashboard that you spoke to. It's 10 leads a day, like a ridiculous number for you to wrap your brain around to just go in and do exactly what I just did. Not at all. Okay. That is where I would start. Now, the beauty of the dashboard is the ability to bring the cream to the top. If I'm going to start this, I want to be calling the highest quality people first. How do we find the highest quality? I think, I feel it's in the activity. She was just active four hours ago and she registered in October. Great yes. Right. So you can sort by your activity and say, I want my activity to be the most recent first, the most recent first sort. Boom. So now we got October 23rd. They were four hours. Oh, that was Sabrina. Look at this. October 21st of 2022. They were active an hour ago and they've looked at 166 homes. Wow. Yeah. Right. Five days ago, they registered back in August. 16 days ago, they registered in February. So this is how you really work through it and not losing sight whenever you get down here and like, oh, God, it's been three months. Right. It's OK. Things happen. Holidays happen. Vacations happen. Kids happen. And, you know, just like her. Her situation is her husband isn't around and yeah. I could pretty much with, without like stereotyping, her husband sounds like he's the one that makes the decisions. So she's not able to move forward without his blessing. Yes. And just respecting that, right. That's probably just their nationality and what their beliefs are. And that's okay. That's her situation. That's all we're looking for in all these leads is what is their situation and how can we be of service? So my challenge to you would be 10 leads a day and work through these and get them organized, get them organized based on situation. So I like to go through 142 leads doesn't take long to call. No, You can drop them in the dialer and whip through them. The most important piece of this, 23 seconds next lead 23 seconds next lead 23 seconds is approximately four rings which is going to create more phone calls back to your phone because people get curious if you stop the call before they can stop the call on their end it piques their curiosity and wants them to call back because they want the control of being able to, to stop the call yes and honestly, if it's four rings and I don't get to my phone, I'm kind of annoyed by the time it's like, if I can't shut my ringer off and it's, and it's like ringing for four rings, I'm like annoyed. You don't want to talk to me at that point. Right. Yes. So that's why I like to hang up in next. So you can literally click through these. And then once you call them all, 
the people that you haven't spoke to, shoot them a text message. Hey, you, you were looking for a home at one point, just calling to see if you're still in the market. You were looking at a home in Calgary and just seeing if you're still in the market or Calgary and surrounding areas, or you can create a template and this would be a crystal expertise. You can create a template that drops in a field that will automatically stamp it. Like this one's in Calgary, this one's in Halifax, this one's in New Westminster. So it'll automatically drop right in that text to say, can you do that in a text? I know you can in the email. Can you do it in the text? Crystal? Yeah. Forgot I made it myself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can drop a dynamic. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. What it's you call that? The dynamic, it's a, what do you call it? It's a short code. Yeah. Short code, command codes. Yeah. Yeah. And that way it'll yeah. just fill it in and just, cause all you're looking for right now is just interaction. Just people mm -hmm. to come back and go, yeah, you know, next year, like th that was a great text next year. And I would, when you go in here, just look at the text messages, right? Just see, mm -hmm. because, because what happens in the system, if a text message goes out and they're in a tried to contact or new lead mode and they respond, it will move it to make contact. So it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you have priority. No. Yeah, and those ones there are all his made contacts. If you check yeah. even, so it's interesting, like what you can see on there, um, the registration date. Go to the top where the pin filters are and click on number one. So that's going to be a mixed bag of people that he has to make contact with that he has. I made it so that it's only anyone that's been active in the last 60 days. If you scroll down, he's got 2020 leads that was active just one day ago. He's never never made contact, 1,200 listings this person's looked at, right? So there's some 2022 leads here, 2021 leads. Like these are old leads that are active that there's no attempt or it doesn't look like there's an attempt to actually communicate with a lot of them. Date created, show most recent last. No, show most, yeah, show most recent last. I'm gonna see the oldest lead. Whoa, love these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where I was going to go. So basically these leads, new lead tried to contact, right? And that's exactly where I was going to go mm -hmm. because again, we are creating our map to our destination and we don't want to have to drive 1900 miles to that destination. We want to break it up into the priorities of people that we have the highest chance of, of converting. And those are truly the people that are active, the people that have corresponded via text or that you've spoke to, and the people that are actively engaged in your site. So yes. if we look at this filter, they haven't had any phone calls. We know we have a valid number or we have not confirmed. And they're yeah. active. So these aren't even like make contact. And I, I would probably be willing to bet that the biggest percentage of these, because the biggest percentage of your database you haven't spoke to, they're not in make contact. Well, I would have called all these people because the first three, four months I was on the system, I called everybody. Just didn't make a call note. No. Yeah. No, it just looks like, yeah. So when I pull this filter up, it's, I, I tell people, it's not saying we didn't call it. You didn't call them. We just didn't log it. So the system is showing us as if you didn't call them. Right. So, and then I'm sure, you know, Beverly can agree is when we're logging stuff, it's for our own benefit of knowing when did we last try Nancy? So we know when to try Nancy again, or when did we last speak to Nancy? So we know when we should be speaking with them again. And yes. without having to constantly think about it, and that's where logging the calls, because all your filters are dynamic and are reflective of the calls and text in the system. So it just keeps you on track with having to try to you know, task in your phone or have a note here, or trying to remember, I got to call this person on Friday. Um, the system will actually, with the filters and what have you, help with that. Um, and then, of course, the tasks you know, for those very specific tasks that we want to make sure that maybe they don't fall within a specific filter that we need to pass them. So this is very interesting to me. 931 emails. Tell me they don't know you. Is Obviously, that even I can't say that. Possible, Crystal. What? 4,020 yeah. emails? 
Yeah, 4,000 emails. So, bet you golly woo. <laughs> Let's call that guy. <laughs> Betcha yeah. golly woo has not unsubscribed. Oh, I know. Betcha golly. <laughs> Betcha golly woo. I got to call that one. So what I would do in this instance, uh, no. So I, I got a quick glimpse at the email. There's no name in the email. That's no, where I, I would love to see yeah. if there's like a name in the I email, just, right? I, yeah, I just checked that as well. You can have some fun with that. I bet you want to buy a home with Ryan. <laughs> Let's see. All this stuff I got to move around. Hello. Hi there. Hey, this is Beverly. I am calling for Ryan. You have been in his dashboard looking at homes online for a while and just calling to get a check-in to see like what your future plans are. Do you plan on buying a home soon or just kind of poking around? And who is this? This is Beverly. I am calling for Ryan. You've been looking at homes on his website for the last couple years, actually. Oh, uh, not for now. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, what, what are your future plans? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> not yet. Next, so so nothing this year. No, nothing this year. What about 2025? Well, we'll try. We'll talk to the family, and then yeah. Okay. Do you own a home now, or are you renting? Renting. Okay. So are you in a lease until next year? Yeah. Okay. We are I'm still I still uh receive uh emails regularly from Ryan. Yes, you do. Perfect. Well, we are here if you have any questions. I will make a note that you know you're not doing anything this year. So obviously we haven't blown up your phone this far, so we promise we won't blow it up. If anything comes up, you have any questions, just let us know, okay? Sure, no problem. Thank yeah, you so much. And you know me. what? Let me get, what what is your first name, sweetie? My name is Beth. Beth? Yeah. All righty. Have a fantastic day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks for it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Two for two. Crystal, when was the last time that's happened? <laughs> it doesn't think... always happen, but clearly there's a lot of people at home this afternoon. <laughs> whoop, whoop. All right. Nothing gay, nothing lost, right? She's not yeah. now. We know what her situation is. Now mm -hmm. we know her name, and Betcha is going to move to Beth. So mm -hmm. now her emails are going to say Beth instead of Betcha. And we know, so we can put like rent her, and we can tag her, and we can move her to contacted. And now she's tagged as a renter. Mm -hmm. All right, so we talk to lead. Renting, and she knew you. Yes. She's like, yeah. And not even 2025 was it maybe. Yeah. But she clearly likes looking at real estate. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Well, that's why you just kind of had fun with it. Like, hey, obviously we haven't blown up your phone so far, so we're not going to bother you. But hey, if anything comes yeah. up, let us know. Yeah. And she's not doing anything like that's alerted. Like she looks at every, like by the looks of it, every listing like once. It just kind of browses through them. Like she's just seeing what's out there, what the prices are. Maybe dream. All right. So we've got her move to talk to. We've got her name is Beth. Now we're just going to add her tag. Oh, hello. There we go. So she's situation renting. And the other tag that I would put on her is just looking one plus. Because that's kind of taking the just looking and the just looking two plus and just looking, just looking, right? It kind of puts that time stamp on it because now that the call is logged, when we see her, whenever remember how when we pulled up the whole group and we were able to sort by activity? Yes. 
or sort by registration. Now, whenever we look up the just looking one plus, we're going to see when this call was made right in that dashboard. So if you pull this tag up in six months, which would be like, I don't know, October ish, right? You're like, oh, she's not moving to one plus. Oh, she talked to her in March. Oh, she's not ready yet. Right. Or, hey, yeah. I just want to check in with her and see if, if she is kind of gearing up for next year. So now she done. We don't have to touch her again. Yes. She tagged. She's she's on the shelf in the grocery store. Is she ready? I don't think you saved your tags. It did or it didn't? I don't think it did. We'll see now. Where well, she? she's going to be out of this filter. They're so all refreshing to see. Her. Sorry, I'll be back in just two minutes. So yeah, go. Yeah. Do you want to check it? So I'll just add them. Yeah. So she was okay. renting and yeah, renting and just looking one plus. Yeah. So this is a good time. Is there anything in the chat or in the Q and A to go over? Uh, so in the Q and A, we have uh, Nathan saying about a lot of horrible qualities being most coming in, saying they never signed up, not knowing why they're calling. Um, so. I've had somebody bring that up in the past as well. Uh, maybe it was you, I don't know. Um, or like they're saying, I didn't do this and I don't, I'm don't. i not doing that. Have you accounted that? I'm not sure how much of you're doing this, Beverly, right now. Um, where it's not usually common. So unless somebody is signing up using their information, um, you know, and if they're actively looking at the emails you're sending, well, is this is, you can verify the email, of course. Well, it's just your email address, right? Or maybe somebody used your phone number and your email or a different email address, right? So you well, can you know, cross source. reference that information. Consider the lead source. I mean, mm -hmm. you have it happen once in a while, but mm -hmm. I've never seen it as a common problem. And, you know, I, I'm just going to take it back to with, without knowing the situation, my first assumption is going to exactly what Ryan was saying. 95% of his leads are bad phone numbers. And we've just, we've already proven that they're mm -hmm. not. We, we called two people and they were two valid phone numbers. Yeah. Um, so Sorry, thank you for your Ryan. patience. What's that? Thank you for your patience. Of course. of course. So a lot of times we get a negative response and then we automatically make that our story because we don't want to call our leads. We want to believe that they're bad and that, that at some point one person's just going to pop up and, and save our day and we're going to magically convert all these people. But for the most part, when I get somebody that's like, oh, I didn't sign up and I'm like, oh, who'd you make mad? And then they laugh. Um, but yeah, I do. I, I always go back to say, well, you know, I just want to confirm the email address just to make sure. Um, but if it's a Facebook lead, I have had a higher increase of people saying that they didn't register because when you have the opportunity to register with Facebook instead of just registering, and I don't know, is that an option in, in your site whenever they go on? Is that an option to, to like register with the Facebook or register with Gmail or register uh, with Facebook? Gmail requires extra steps because of uh, Gmail privacy, all that stuff. It can be done. I can't remember how it has to be done through support and stuff. Um, yeah, Facebook, they can. Okay. You're breaking up bad, sweetie. Um, so the only other question we have is... Uh, we have yeah, my internet. Okay. Yeah, you're cutting out. So with Facebook, what you have to remember is a lot of times spouses use their email address in their Facebook. And when the lead registers with Facebook, she's still trying to talk. Yeah. I don't know who's going to hear her. <laughs> But a lot of times when leads say register through Facebook, it will use a wrong email address because I, I've talked to a wife before and I, I went to verify the email address and she goes, oh my God, that's like my husband's. Her Facebook account had that email address and she wasn't even aware of it. So a lot of people that have older Facebook accounts don't even know what email address is tied to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, that just solves that problem. That It came up in the Q&A. Um, 
that they had a lot of leads that said they didn't register. Um, so I would be careful also with your lead in because that's just a, it just is a quick excuse for people to avoid the phone call. Um, I, I was great at creating my own objections. So you want to be very careful if you notice on my two phone calls, it's like, Hey, this is Beverly. I'm calling for Ryan because they were leads that they had a lot of emails. So I, I, I name dropped. Right. But if there yes. are new leads that are new, I go right to, Hey, I see you're looking online in Calgary, or I see you're looking at homes in Calgary. What's your story? What, what are you yes. looking for? Um, because if we say too much, they're not even listening. They're trying to figure out how the hell I know you. Yeah. So really be paying attention. And I don't know, Crystal, who asked that in the Q&A, but, um, or who made, who made that comment in Q&A, but I, I would be very careful at your opening line and, and see if that changes any dynamics. Was there anything else, Crystal, in the Q&A, in the chat? Um, am I clear now? Yes, you're clear now. <laughs> oh my, okay. Um, I know my internet was going, uh, might want to create a soul drip. So um, I don't believe that Ryan has access to that. Read um, a what? So a sold drip. Um, and this oh. would be somebody that is looking to buy. And I, this might have been a comment based on the, one of the conversations is setting somebody up to see what the homes are actually selling for in that area, right? So we can see the list prices, but being able to see what they're selling for in an area that they may be considering. And you cut out a little bit now. Are you saying like sold in in what category? Are you cut out again? Like listings. So I ain't out his system. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm only getting bits and pieces, and I'm not like fully comprehending what you're saying. <laughs> So Ryan, we were able to break down yeah. this first priority no no and worries. also your contacted. Do you know how to get to those 142 contacted leads? No. All right. So I'm going to clear your filter and I'm going to go add filter item and I'm going to go to pipeline. And I'm going to add made contact. And I'm going to save this. I'm screaming at you so you can see it. <laughs> I'm just going to make it a personal. And then I'm going to pin it to the dashboard and then we'll save it. It's truly that easy to create a filter. So there it is right there. Those are your 142 leads when we talked to Sabrina. So between your first priority here that Crystal has already, this is in everyone's dashboards. Am I right, Crystal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and these, your first priority are all of your leads that have been active within the last 60 days. So once you have that phone call to them because it's set to zero, you're not going to have any leads in here. But the beautiful thing about this is if you work the leads that haven't been active, let's say you send them an email and say, hey, this is the, th this is the hot list of new properties that just came on the market and they open an email they're going to fall organically into this filter because they've now become active. So once you call through these 59 leads, which honestly, if you throw 59 leads into a filter, 23 seconds next, 23 seconds next, and nobody answers the phone, you're looking at less than 45 minutes. Yes. Do -ding, do -ding. I mean, a little over a half hour, but I promise you somebody's going to be picking up the phone, especially based on, on our experience today. Um, and this way, you're going to be able to take out and confirm if there's any bad phone numbers and that that list is going to kind of condense. So, so you're going to be able to easily activate your bad phone number campaign. You're going to clean up your two top priorities, your 142 that have had correspondence. And those are probably all good phone numbers. The 142 people are going to all more than likely be good phone numbers because they've opened up text messages or you spoke to them. Yes. This one in, in the tried to contact, maybe not so much. And that's where I'm really curious for you to get 
a, a proper valid number of how many are bad phone numbers. So I would say take the focus off of converting, 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 and put the focus on debunking your own myth of 95% being bad phone numbers and just see what the real number is and just have fun with it. Yeah, no. That makes sense. Yeah. So always utilize this too at the top of your headers, because this is where you can really sort if you have a big list, but always look at your most recent active, always look at your registered longer ago and most active, most recent, because that that's where the sweet spot is. Yes. Make sense? Okay. Do you feel like you have a little bit more of a focus now? Yeah, I do. Is there any way to sort of like it says reg slash source? Uh, is there any way to just switch that to Calgary? Right here? Yeah. Well, you can sort it. Let me move my little window here. Can you sort it by location? I don't know if you can. You by IP city. Yeah, you can organize it. But I. I wouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater and unless it's like way out of your zone, the main goal is find out where they are in the process. Just because it says that's where they're looking. It doesn't mean that that's where they're actually wanting. Oh, to I look. guess that makes sense with VPNs and stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't put a lot of stock in that um, until they verbally tell me. Once they verbally tell me, I just want to open this up and look. Nabjot. Yeah, see that that says Brampton, but this one says that they're looking in Calgary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so their IP is showing that their location at the time of registration is Brampton, but they're yes. looking in Calgary, which is normal. There's so many people moving to Alberta right now because it's probably, as far as housing goes, one of the more affordable places to move to. Yes. For now, anyway. For now. Yeah, because because really the goal is you want to have, it's, it's not about conversion, Ryan. It's about conversation because the more conversations you have, the the more you're setting yourself up for success in, in building your pipeline. Yes. Is there anything that we need to go over in the chat or the Q and A before we end? No, I think I just the, so. the activity was a big one for me. Uh, and then uh, who's actually been remember. contacted. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got your yeah, homework. So cut out we'll go, you. Yeah. And we'll go over more of this kind of stuff as well. Right. When we go through uh, some training, <laughs> yeah. help you understand filters just that much more. Okay. No, sounds good. Thank you for your time. You're so welcome. Thank You're you welcome. for your time. And bye, everybody. I'll awesome. see you in two weeks. Awesome. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks, everyone. Bye. bye.